What's up guys, my name's Liam, and today we're going to be talking about the brand new Hitscan Hyperlite. This is, without question, one of the most impressive gaming mice that I reviewed of the year. And considering the fact that this is their first mouse to come out with, makes it even more impressive. But, does that mean it's going to be the perfect gaming mouse for you? Let's check it out. And before we get started today, I did want to let you know that this was sent out to me. However, everything you'll be hearing in this video is going to be my own words and my own opinions. Included inside the box, it does come with some documentation, USB-C cable. It did come with two different sizes of skates, a larger style of skates and the smaller corner feet. Then it did also come included with the 1K receiver. Here's a look at it. It does have a rubberized bottom. If you are interested in getting any of the higher pulling rates, such as a 2K, 4K or the 8K, you do need to purchase the 8K receiver receiver separately and the difference with this one is it does have an LED indicator on the top but the same rubberized bottom. For the bottom layout on the mouse I really just love everything about the design on this. I feel like they did a fantastic job. If I were to design this mouse myself I literally would have probably done a lot of the exact same things that they did. They have an open bottom that is exposed here to reduce the weight further. Power button over here on this side, this does control the DPI. And if you look in here, you can clearly see they are using the PCB to reinforce the integrity of the shell. And the one thing that has been very impressive for me about this mouse is how lightweight this is out of the box. It feels just absolutely solid. I don't notice any issues with a lot of these other similar types of mice that have been coming out recently, kind of with these very similar specs. They almost feel like a lot of them are kind of a little bit more flexible in a sense when you grab them and grip them. And this one really does feel solid. And the skate design that they went with, huge fan of this. I really enjoy how they have the bigger skate down here in the bottom. And you also have a somewhat larger skate up here at the top. Plenty of real estate here to put just about any type of skate design you wish to do so on if you choose to do something differently. And the skates that do come included with this are just absolutely amazing. They feel just as premium as a lot of the aftermarket skates out there, like something similar to the core pads. This also does have an excellent coating on it. It's been very grippy for me. As you can see, it does kind of attract some fingerprints there on my black copy. So if you don't like that type of a look, I probably recommend going with the white copy or something like that. But with the feeling of this, no matter, even if I get my hands wet, this coating has been very grippy. For the switches, mouse one and two, they're using the Omron Opticals. The implementation on here is fantastic. You get almost barely any pre-travel. Post-travel is really solid as well. Even coming up here in the tip, just a very little bit more of play. But no matter where you click this all around, it does feel pretty consistent. It does come a little bit heavier up here towards the top, but nothing too major. You can still play up here and they do still feel somewhat lighter, but you do get the best click experience clicking more towards the middle. And same thing over here on a mouse number two. As you can see there, it looks like there's just a very minimal amount of play, but this is nothing at all that I notice while I'm using it or in game. For the scroll wheel, they do have a rubberized ring, so it's nice and grippy. A little bit stiffer on the scroll, which I do kind of like. You do get these very lightly defined steps. And then the center scroll click feels pretty good. Nice and tension, but it doesn't feel like it's overly stiff. And also excellent implementation over here on the side buttons. Just the most minimal amount of pre-travel back here in the rear. Practically no pre-travel at all here in the middle. And the post-travel, it does hit a nice solid wall back there. I'm not getting any major noticeable rocking on the side buttons front to back. Ever since I've gotten this thing in my hands, out of the box, I haven't been able to put it down. It really has been feeling that great. As you can see, just everything about the implementation from the side buttons, the clicks, everything feels pretty much near perfect to me. So let's go ahead and drop the click and quality sound check.
This did come out of the box without skates installed on it. You do have to put the skates on yourself. Without skates, it was sitting at 39 grams. With having the bigger skates on here, looks like it's gonna put it at about 41.1 grams. And the balance on this really does feel perfect front to back and left to right. Here's a quick look of the software for the mouse. It has a really nice and clean layout. Really easy to come in here and make the type of adjustments that I look for in a mouse. And these are the settings that I have been using that have been working out best for me. For the performance, this is using the 8K Compex firmware solution, something I've talked about many times in my videos. Unfortunately, I'm having an issue with this firmware and these Omron Opticals. With my XLAT system, so I don't have confidence to post the numbers. Just to let you know that I have been testing this firmware solution with several other mice for a long time. I have been getting it to work with some of the other implementations with mechanical switches. The performance on it has been sub 0.4 milliseconds for click latency. So everything has been feeling top tier and this should compete with the top gaming mice that are currently on the market. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump into the shape and this shape is something that I'm absolutely a huge fan of. This is not a Razer Viper Mini clone or anything like that. It is similar though in size and though the shape is not exact, they don't feel very similar to one another. If you are a fan of the Viper Mini, I do believe that this should fall in the alley of something that you would be interested in. And without question, this is one of my favorite shapes that is currently out there. So let's just go ahead and jump into the comparisons so you can see what I'm talking about. First up, I am gonna put it up against the ATK F1 Ultimate. There's been some drama online between these two mice. I don't wanna get too into it, but the shapes on these are similar. With that being said though, I love the ATK F1 Ultimate. I truly have been using this thing a lot. I do have three copies of this, but I do wanna say from my personal experience from someone that does use this all the time, these two mice, they actually do feel pretty different from one another. So let's go ahead and jump into the differences between these here. The first most obvious noticeable difference for me when I picked this up in the hands, again, as much as I love this mouse, the one thing that kind of bothers me about it just a little bit is the sensor placement. This does have a little bit of a lower sensor placement, and every time I switch over to this, I always find myself having to adjust to it. So lining these up as good as I can here on the bottom, you can clearly see that this one has a little bit of a higher sensor placement over here on the hyperlight and this one is more of a true mid sensor where again this one's just slightly below and it does feel a little bit lower on top of that these do have a little bit different skates and the feeling of these in the hands they do just feel pretty different this atk for whatever reason every time i pick this up it just feels flexible you can even see here i can get some bend up here on the switches i'm not too sure if that's going to come through on the angle of my camera there, but just everything about this is a little bit bendy. And I don't know what is about this one. This, this one just feels much more solid. Even if I try and push really hard up here, you can see I can't even get any flex next to the buttons. But when it comes to the shape, it does look like there's also minor differences. You do kind of notice a little bit more aggressive curves to the back. This one feels just a little bit tightened and more buttoned up here. You don't get as much as a curve. So even though the shape on these is very similar to one another due to the fact of the build, skate design, skates that come included on the Hyperlite, and the sensor placement really does kind of make these feel different from each other. And next up, we're gonna go to the GOAT, the Amaya, a mouse that I've praised endlessly on my channel. And you can clearly see, looking at these next to each other, why I enjoy the Hyperlite so much, as much as I praise the Maya. They both have a similar design on the bottom, using the PCB to reinforce the sides. The shape on these is not really that far apart from one another, though the Maya does feel just a little bit more flat at the top with the hump profile to me. But really, I do feel like these are two of my favorite, uh, especially smaller mice that are currently out there on the market.
All right, and lastly, we will throw it up against the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition on the bottom, like I'd mentioned. The Viper has more aggressive curves and flares, where this one just feels a little bit more flat there. Taking a look at the top profile, the curve signature from the top mid down to the sides, but here is the different with the mid hump presence on both of these. All right guys, so that about wraps things up on the Hitscan Hyperlite. And in my videos, I generally try and be as objective as possible because I understand everybody out there has different hand size, grip style, some people prefer ergo, more medium, larger style mice and stuff like that. With all that being said, I'm obviously gonna become very subjective here for a minute as I generally prefer this type of a size of a gaming mouse. This is what I generally feel most confident in and play best on. Everything about the design from this, again, this being their first mouse, this is without question one of the best gaming mice of the year. And I don't say that lightly. The second I picked this up and got it in my hands and just started playing with it, it's something that I really knew instantly and all the time that I've been putting on it, I haven't changed my mind. So if this looks like it's anything that would be of interest to you as far as the shape or the size goes, then I could say just go out and get it because really this thing is that great. All right, guys, so if you have any questions or feel like I left anything out, please let me know down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed watching this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.